Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So let's look at the idea of painting brilliant sunshine. Um, and we'll use the same image we looked at last week, that photograph on the river lot. So brilliant sunshine takes really two main tools. First is contrast and the second is temperature. So first, let's say we're working from a photograph. We need a photograph with really good or even great contrast, light and dark, clearly established. And then here's the photograph from last week. And then here it is in black and white. And you can see that value is doing most of the work here. But the second tool is color temperature. Now, if you're like when I'm painting, right, I'm using pig's hair and ground up dirt to try to create the great wide world it, with in three dimensions, real sunlight. I'm sort of exaggerating about the crudeness of the tools, but you see what I'm saying. It's a pretty, it's a big stretch to think you're really going to be able to replicate life, but you need to extract as much as you can from the tools that you have. You need to push contrast perhaps, and maybe push temperature. And when you're thinking about color temperature, warm and cool, the most important thing is you keep them apart. So where the sun's hitting, it's warm. Where the sun is not hitting in shadow, it's cool. Now, of course, if you've got a red barn in sunlight and shadow, the shadow side of the barn might be warmer than say a, a, a tree in shadow, but that's relative. The lit side and the dark side of each object, warm and cool, and you need to keep them apart. So let's look at two images. Here's an image, nothing wrong with the painting, I suppose. You see the shadows, you see the light, but there's very little use of color temperature here. We know where everything is, but it's not very enticing. And yet, when you push the color temperature, you really get a sense of the evening light. And the way that works is because I'm separating the warm and the cool and keeping them apart. So, you know, you use the first tool of value to take you part of the way, and then you use the color temperature to take you the rest of the way. So let's look at how I used the photograph from last week to paint that this week in order to get this sense of sunlight on the scene. I'll see you at the end. You'll see I'm just testing a color here. This is the first color against the toned canvas. And so I just wanted to find it and then I've got that in cool. You can see how cool it is. And then this very dark mass of all the foliage and the leaves and whatever the bushes and things along that rock wall. And it's a very dark kind of green. And then look at the shift here in temperature to the water, it's kind of a brownie color. And then these are just shadow shapes. Once I've got them in sort of on the first one, I've just repeated them on those two rock faces and then using sort of the same color down here for the um, shadows all along the edge of the river. But you can see that I'm just building up the big shapes. This is the, the field, the warm field. So it's warmer than the grasses. But still, you'll see when I put in the lit side, this is the first lit color, and this is the lit side of the river. And you can see it's kind of that muddy green gray color, but it just shifts in value. And there's the shadow side of the, uh, you know, the reflection of the shadowed trees. And now some of these greens, the first greens, the sunlit greens, and this is where I'm going to want you to go towards the end. So there's these smaller little green shapes there. And then I'm just putting in the blue hills as they go into the distance. You just see each one's a little bluer than the last. And then there's kind of a, I didn't want a blue sky because it's right down at the horizon. You can see even in the photograph, there's no blue in it. I just kind of had a cad lemon with a tiny touch of blue in it to kind of just give that sense of evening light. Actually, it's morning, I think, way in the distance. Now there you can see the sunlit side of the field, the shadow sides right beside it, and this is the sunlit side of that field. I've made it warmer than it is in real life, but you can see that my shadow is warm, but much cooler than the field. And then these are some of the darks where I'm going to pull you towards the end. 
and then there's the darks at the bottom of those trees where they join that field because it's really quite dark under there. And then now I'm starting to get some of the lights and I'm just hitting the light. See, I'm sort of hitting it and leaving it. I'm not dragging around very much. You just kind of find the color and then now I'm taking the darks and pushing that back into from the left hand side back into it. And then sort of a few touches of light back into the and then now all these trees here are all a little bit different in color, just shifting a little bit, all of them warm, well, warm greens, relatively speaking, shifting the color from one to the next. So it looks like a bunch of different trees up against now the, the water color. And then you'll just see I've got a shadow color that I'm just kind of carving the shapes of those individual trees and then putting that real dark down into the bottom of that cliff. And again, the sunlit side. And then I come in with the darks and push it back the other way to sort of give that side uh, a sense of form. And then here there's the tree and I'm sort of just mushing that color in, smearing it into the dark that's already there. And then you'll see that I'll take darks and push them back up into the lights. And so I'm, I'm kind of carving light and dark, light and dark. There's this. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of paint on there and I'm kind of twisting the brush to sort of release that paint rather than just like single strokes. I kind of mush that paint in by twisting the brush to release it. And there's that final tree. And then we go to the trees that it really, now this is where you get brilliance because it's a real dark. The light is against the dark and there's a temperature shift also. So here we're still getting these lights and then you'll see that I'll, well here I'll just paint those. I'm changing the color a little bit each time you see. And then once I've got those in I'll come in with the dark and paint up underneath it to sort of get that sense of that it's not just a block of something that it's actually a sunlit thing in the top. And then here I'm doing the same. I've got the lit side in and then I'm carving the darks back into it to kind of give it form. And then there's the uh, sunlit reflection shape that is next. See the values are not nearly as strong in the water. They're all tempered completely. And then there's that little hit of, see it's not very blue, but it certainly gives the sense of sunlight. And now I'll have to adjust that later and make it a little bit less intense. And then there's the finished painting. Strong Com really strong composition in terms of what we discussed last week. Really strong sense of uh, light and dark and then pushing the temperatures in order to have that full effect of brilliant sunlight. So please do like the video if you enjoyed it and comment if there's something you'd like to say. I'd love to hear from you. Please do subscribe. You can sign up for my email list if you just hit the show more button just below the video and you will receive this in your inbox every Tuesday. So I hope you have a terrific week. Get some painting done that excites you. I will see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.